when you find yourself in the middle of a giant shit storm, clouds of shit raining down all around you, it is essential that we see the silver linings. And right now, as we find ourselves in the midst of the, oh, man, I, oh even the language, what do we call the shit storm that we're in right now? What will history call this 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 drama, this saga, this this episode of American history, of world history? The Corona crisis, the coronaphobia crisis, that forced unemployment crisis, because that's obviously what we're experiencing today more than any real pandemic crisis. What what what, what will this? How the pandemic? Remember the pandemic of 2020, the great COVID 19 outbreak. Do you do you remember? How are you going to tell your grandkids about this? Because they're going to look back at human history and they're going to see this with their perspective of the Spanish flu, and now the the story that's going viral online from the Drudge Report yesterday and so many other sources. In 1968, there was a pandemic, and what did they do? They had Woodstock. <laughs> yeah, and, and it, it, it's, it, it, I'm, it, it's a legitimate argument. I am 100% on that side of, yes, this is no reason to slow down anything that we're doing except to, to help allocate resources to those who really need it in the actual health crisis. But uh, it, 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 you can't say, well, well they, they had... They had Woodstock during the last pandemic, so we should shut things down now. And this is what makes things so dangerous, it, just intellectually, about this crisis. Like, hey, well, well, the last generation, they, they weren't as afraid because they didn't have the medical technology that we have today. They didn't, in 1968, when they went to Woodstock and they had a party, they didn't know. Well, actually, they did. They actually had medical teams on, on site at Woodstock specifically because of that specifically because of the threat of a potential pandemic among the party goers at the large gathering known as Woodstock but 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 we have the we we can do it now in a way that we can we can get tests out and we can we can have digital contact tracing and we have governments to protect us in new and wondrous ways that they were never capable of before by violating our rights we're going to do so much better Really? No. So when we, when you tell your grandkids, but what did you do during the Corona pandemic? What did, what did you do? What, what do we call this? It was, it was the coronavirus outbreak of 2020. There's got to be another way that history will acknowledge the uniquely government induced crisis that we are experiencing right now all over the world. So let us take stock, count the shit clouds, and count the silver linings. Because for all of the shit that we're in the middle of right now, I see the light at the end of the tunnel. You know, when you're going through hell, keep on going. We're going to keep going. We're going to get so much positive momentum out of this. And here's why. First, to count the shit clouds. There's the virus itself. It's a cloud of shit. It's a very real thing. Real people are really dying. This is a significant major event in world history, in the development of the global human petri dish, wherever the virus came from, whether it was from a weapons laboratory or from a wet market in China where, oh my gosh, you had dead cat guts mixing with bat poop and excrement from all these animals. Yeah, it's gross. It's really gross. Uh, one more reason to be a vegetarian. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. How, how do you know when a vegan walks into a room? Don't worry. He'll tell you. Um, yeah, th there's the forced crisis that we're experiencing right now. The economic shutdown, the unemployment crisis. And that's what this is. It is a forced unemployment crisis. That individuals are denied the right to determine their level of risk for themselves versus uh, in terms of the risk of the virus versus the risk of not having a job of staying at home and all the problems associated with that. Yeah, uh, there's the economic suffering that, that ripples out far beyond that. And really, uh, as, as much as my, my heart goes out to the healthcare workers who are 
on the front lines and, and actually fighting this and, 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 and dealing with the coronavirus patients. I'm more concerned about all the healthcare workers who are put out of a job because the forced unemployment crisis hits them too when they're told their hospitals can't perform elective surgeries and now their jobs are non-essential and hospital workers are being laid off, not being redirected to treat coronavirus. I mean, this is insane. But to the servers, the, the bartenders, the strippers, the the drivers, uh, you know, the, the people who are who just shit out of luck. Yeah. Uh, to, to the pants industry. <laughs> I haven't bought pants since this crisis started. Have you? I've only been dressed up from the waist up as so many other people. And I know I, I said this as a joke. I, I didn't. I wasn't the first to come up with it. But I said it as a joke before we heard the real numbers. Now there are real numbers, actually. Jokes are prescient in coronaphobia era. Uh, where we saw recently the numbers from Walmart having supply chain problems specifically because people aren't buying as much waist down as waist up attire. There's the martial law. And this is something that, that I have fought for a long time in all of its various forms. And now we see a ratcheting up of martial law. And it's nice to see that a lot of cops are taking this as an excuse to be cool. Like, no, we don't We don't have to enforce this. You know, we don't have to uh, be dicks unnecessarily. But uh, I guess we have a super chat interrupting our opening segment. Better be relevant from Hiram Bifidum. I need a map to get across the 69th bridge. I don't know. I'm not sure what that even is referring to. Is that is that part of the shitstorm? Are our maps not like is that a thing? Is Google Maps failing us now? I don't know if we're going that far, but yeah, we're starting to see cracks in the food supply chain, right? That meat is no longer available in some fast food restaurants. Uh, Wendy's, most notably, right? Where's the beef? That was two weeks ago, and it's hard. Like, there's this time distortion where you know, even when this started right away, things just got going really, really fast, and that means. People paying attention to current events, people reading the news. That means that there is more happening and more attention going to it than ever before. Americans are now touched by the news like never before. To understand, you cannot just be an out of touch, uninformed American. Going to the grocery store, what, what, what's up with, why are people wearing all these masks? You know, why are there these marks on the floor? What's this six feet apart thing? What, why are you spraying me down? What's that? Well, well, I need a mask now. Like You have to be paying attention. And that's, that's a good thing. So to the silver linings here, and I, and I think we've touched on so many, the efficiency of this, and, and in the last... Uh, Two long opening segments we had Wednesday and Thursday last week. We got really into the economics of this, and especially in Thursday's show, the efficiency that we get from a decrease in retail, a decrease in people working uh, in person, right? And the efficiency that comes with doing things remote. And yes, there are consequences of that as well. But overall, that we have been pushed to adopt technologies that we should have adopted a long time ago more uh, thoroughly, I think this is an amazing thing for economic efficiency. Uh, gas prices going down because people are driving less. The, 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 you know, and, and it sucks, especially for auto mechanics who can't work. Right? If if, if you don't have, uh, you know, if so many businesses on narrow margins are just forced to either go into mothball shutdown mode and and try to hold on and, and not go bankrupt by overdue rent payments and bills that they still got to pay when they're not doing business or or majorly restructure you know as as we talked about with restaurants even in phoenix where we had a bartender or bar restaurant owner at that protest saying i you know i'll reopen on may 15th and we're like what reopen a day asshole like really like what are you afraid of and i was like oh yeah it's not what you're afraid of it's what everybody else is afraid of. You can't if, if the government successfully scares a quarter of your customers into not coming to patronize your business. It doesn't matter if they let you reopen. But the general trend towards a greater efficiency in certain mechanisms and mail order, 
Um, I've always been a fan of that. You know, what what should you buy in retail? Really, only things that you have to feel and see in person or need right away if you can anticipate your needs. And you don't have to anticipate much anymore with two days shipping from Amazon Prime. I don't know whether this, they're not still making it two days right now. They're like, they're overwhelmed. But that, that we're going to see a, a shift and, and a focus to uh, online being an even more dominant form of retail. This is a good thing. This is going to lead us to drone delivery more often where we have it in, in very limited same day delivery with Amazon in, in major urban areas already. Pretty soon it's going to be all over the world. Anything you can buy on the internet, you can get dropped out of the sky to you with a drone. And, and that, that people are right before this crisis, people like us who cared about these abstract ideas like economic efficiency because they, they, they lead to a greater quality of life for people, right? For, for those of us who, who saw that, we were like, yes, this technology can't come any sooner. And, and you know, we've been encouraging Americans to adopt this technology, to get more. But you've heard me over the years with Adam versus the man talk about, you know, the 3D molecular printers on your fingertips attached to your brain, zapping things, you know, out, out of the sky into existence and taco copters delivering food from. 3D printer food towers that can create any gourmet cuisine you could possibly imagine at the push of a button and deliver it at the exact right temperature to you out of the sky right when you want it. push of a button. If you have one of these food towers five minutes away, you know, by drone flight, you've got this. You can, you, that's it. This is the future of food delivery with this modern technology. And the fact that government scared people into adopting this technology sooner, hey, you know what? I'll take the silver lining to the shit cloud, right? The self-awareness, people being forced at home has caused a lot of meditation, a lot of reflection, a lot more reading of books, watching of meaningful documentaries, although most of the time that people have spent at home, as we know, has been wasted. We have seen the numbers with internet porn and Netflix and so many other diversions, of course, people taking advantage of uh, at home, and that's fine too. But the silver lining here is that there's more attention, more brain energy that was going into your bullshit nine to five, now going into self-awareness, self-reflection, learning about the world, following current events, uh, you know, especially watching documentaries, things even now that are being censored, like the pandemic documentary. Uh, there is the surge towards homeschooling by lack of choice. Everybody's a homeschooler now if your government-run schools are shut down. It's not everybody. Was it everybody? Did every school shut down in the country? Did it? Because I was following it as it as it crept up state by state first, then it went national. So now we're at national school shutdown for government schools. Are there still private schools operating, or did they are they is it, are they all non essential? Education is a this thing we've been ripping you off for 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 years. Uh, is it, to have government run schools. It's now non essential. So we're sending the kids home. I I I. I see the national debate now is uh, whether schools are going to open up in the fall and it looks like no they're going to be able to keep the pressure on and this is this is a result of competing factions within the government racket there are those who want to keep the government school system strong because they're making money off it because they understand its essentialness to the racket that they propagandize america's youth and there's still so many ways that they're able to do this but is the government-run school system going to lose a huge part of its customer base if uh, that's not the best term for it, I know. But if most of them, <laughs> yeah, uh, victims rather, uh, if most of them see homeschooling now as a viable, viable option, parents able to work from home and able to talk to their children like never before, the connection between parents and their children is one that has been pushed out in favor of relationships between children and government teachers forcing a predetermined curriculum on them and bureaucrats and administrators and strengthening the relevance of that connection between parents and children directly is a huge step in the right direction. A huge step really not towards homeschooling or private schooling necessarily, but paradigm shifting more importantly towards unschooling. And that is allowing a child's natural inclination to learn and be curious, to be supported in their efforts to just indulge that natural curiosity, self-guided learning. And that's a huge part of what we're getting right now with coronaphobia. Of course, the other silver lining, perhaps, the coronitas. All right, we got a big super chat here. 
from our friend Chad Lemoyne coming to us nice. all the way from Louisiana. It's very important to understand that governments are lying when they're telling us when they're when they tell us they're doing something for our safety. Merely fabricating a threat gives them an excuse to spend money on false solutions to enrich their sponsors. Oh, hey, um, it's me. It's uh, Freedom. Freedom, page 28. I was like, man, this is really good. Who wrote, who wrote this? Because he put it, he, he got it, got it, he got it under 225 characters. It's very important to understand that governments are lying when they're telling, when they tell us they're doing something for our safety. Merely fabricating a threat gives them an excuse to spend money on false solutions to enrich their sponsors. So yeah. Today. Yeah. Thank you, Chad. Chad, Chad is uh, part of our writing team. And as CJ has it pulled up, the freedomline.com, please get that on screen. You can get the freedom book in every format possible digitally for free, including audiobook. If you insist on paying for a paper copy, you can get it uh, at cost uh, as much as, as cheap as we were able to make it on Amazon. And we give it away for free at our events. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll take this opportunity take for a bit of a plug. Yes. Would you, well, oh, and we're sending them to Patreon like members. members. Yes, of course, as, as a thank you signed, we can write whatever, if, you, if you're if you a, a Patreon supporter of the show, patreon.com slash Adam versus the man. Um, I'll write, this is, this I got from my friend Larry Sharp. I'll write whatever you want on this book. We left my name off the cover, partly so I could sign it. No, I put the message first, but no, you. I love Joe Biden. Or, uh, Joe Biden's <laughs> hair smells good, Adam Kokesh. Um, uh, <laughs> Donald Trump has the best hair in politics. Signed, Adam Kokesh. You, whatever you want me to sign, uh, you know, I'll do it. Um, and yeah, anybody who joins our patron support group, that's, that's not the, <laughs> our patrons need a support group after being patrons for too long and listening to Adam versus the man, you're going to need therapy. Yeah, no, our, our, our group of supporters at patreon.com slash Adam versus the man. Yes. Uh, with, with your first payment, we'll get you a, a copy of the book in the mail. And if anybody wants to sponsor the next print run, I know we're still importing from China which is where our books come from for 40 cents a copy. We can get, if, if someone wants to chip in 4,000 bucks, we'll get 10,000 copies and we'll go back to just like giving them out everywhere, like flyers. And I, I love getting, I loved it when we were able to do that. So, all right, back to the silver linings. Coronitas, all the little babies being made by people staying home and having more sex. Yes. Now, whether that actually happens uh, in any kind of statistically meaningful way, if people are motivated to, to have kids right now, uh, we'll see. But uh, I think there are going to be a lot of people afraid to have children right now as well. But just that we have this idea even of, 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 uh, of, of Coronitas, I think that's a, a beautiful silver lining to celebrate. To me, something like really near and dear to my heart as a longtime civil disobedience activist, there's always been a certain camaraderie in civil disobedience. You know, like, Franco in the news looking at the guy next to him going, Oh, what, your yeah, first time? <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah, okay. Well, we're not in a noose. And the imposition of this partial martial law is so petty right now and insignificant that it's encouraged so many people to be civil disobedience activists, people who weren't political prior to this. And I've said this for years. Hey, you know, he's like, I get, you know, I, I'm an evangelist. I'm not just an evangelist for freedom. I'm an evangelist for activism and for participation in politics. And I, I, I get, you know, from a lot of people, well, I, you know, it's okay. I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to check out. I'm going to opt out when I can, you know, I'm going to, I'll, I'll pay a little bit in taxes. It's my leave me alone fee, uh, whatever. Okay. And, and I, you know, the, I, that kind of apathy and, and, you know, deliberate apathy even is, is so offensive to me. My, you know, throw away talking point to those people has always been, all right, you don't do government, that's fine. You don't do politics, okay. Politics is going to keep doing you. And right now, politics is doing America pretty darn hard. Yeah, yeah, the forced unemployment crisis, the, 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 the partial martial law, all the shutdown, lockdown, whatever, has led the majority of the American people to be civil disobedience activists, one form or another, even among the people who support the lockdowns. They can't follow all the contradicting edicts of state and local and federal governments and 
contradicting guidelines. Do I wear a mask now? Now can I get six? Do I go to grocery stores? If, if I do go to grocery store, do I have to wear a mask and gloves? Am I not allowed to? Is a, is a mask making it worse? Oh, my, and, and like, no, the, the mask thing, like, you know, the, the mask making it, are the masks significantly effective? That's that's a conversation that, that we should be having. There's some people going to like the far side of this, like, did you hear there was a jogger who died because they suffocated because they were wearing you know, like that's that's good natural selection if that's the case if you're wearing a mask while going for a jog and you suffocate yourself with your mask <laughs> screw you get out of my gene pool like sorry you probably don't deserve to reproduce you know but that's yeah darwin award for that guy I, and i don't mean to, to, to be inhumane to that at all but it's just too funny that people are raising those arguments i mean the arguments on the extremes of both sides of this thing are are absolutely ridiculous but all of the arguments in favor of lockdowns and shutdowns are laughable and ridiculous and should be lampooned. Then the ultimate silver lining here, and this is this is really like the, the ultimate takeaway of this whole segment is when you weigh out all of these shit clouds making up this current shit storm, and, and you look at all the, the silver linings in these clouds, it, it, it's it's very encouraging to look at the long-term and the biggest long-term silver line, because like all, all of the shitty parts are short-term. Now by short-term, yeah, it could be years. You know, the forced unemployment crisis is gonna be with us at least through the end of the year. If they keep school shut down, things, people are gonna be hurting. For I, I, I don't mean to say that, I don't mean to in any way demean the significance or even the timing of that. As we covered a couple of weeks ago, Bob and Michelle, uh, with uh, was it J.P. Morgan on MSNBC saying that the, the the unemployment crisis that we're experiencing now could be ten to twelve years to recover from? I don't think it's going to be that bad. I, I, I'm I'm very hopeful and, and generally confident that you know for those of you who, who are looking at at the uh, economic suffering that you're experiencing right now, it it can't last that long. I I, I mean the the acute period of this shutdown. Maybe they can keep schools closed through the end of the year. And as we come out of this, I, I don't think we will fail to adapt in, in so many ways. And that those of you who are out of work and really suffering right now will find better ways, whether it's in the new bifurcated economy on the, the righteous black market side or on the uh, white slash red market side of things. Man, uh, you know, look at the long run. And I hope you can look at the long run with me and be encouraged that all of this attention and energy being put back on politics is going to lead to a major shift in consciousness coming out of this. This is a huge awakening moment for humanity. This could be the last time we screwed things up this badly. Hopefully we can look back on the great coronaphobia crisis of 2020 and say, man, it's a good thing we learned from that. Look how far we've come.